Welcome back to the Atari ST Nostalgia GFA Basic Tour. In the previous video we had a look at getting input using random numbers. And in this video we will check out how to draw graphics on screen. And we will also use random numbers as input for those commands to see uh, what we can do with this. Now for drawing, uh, GFA Basic actually provides some ready-made functions. Uh, especially for some basic shapes like dots and lines and stuff. Um, I will go to my screen. As you see, I've got my basic editor open in direct mode um, because it's easy to show the command. And uh, to draw a dot on the screen, um, you can actually use the draw command. And the draw command just wants uh, uh, two things, which is an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. For instance, if I do draw uh, 200, 200, it will draw a dot on the screen. Um, now the, the dot is pretty small, so I hope it will be visible in the video, but um, I'm guessing it will be. And the coordinates are counted uh, actually exactly the way the screen is drawn, which means uh, 0, dot 0 is actually in the upper left corner. And in this case, in, in monochrome mode, which uses a 600 by 400, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, 640 by 400 resolution, and uh, the lower right is actually the coordinate 640, uh, 400. Uh, so if I do uh, draw 1, dot 1, there will actually be a dot in the complete upper left corner. Uh, I will do 10, 10. It will be a bit more easy to, to spot uh, because I don't know if I get on the edge of the screen in my videos. And if I draw, uh, for instance, uh, 630 by 390, uh, you should be able to spot a dot uh, right in the bottom of the screen. Now, of course, if I wanted to draw graphics, I, I could write some sort of routine that drew lots of dots uh, together at the right coordinates and, and show something there. But that would be uh, probably very inefficient and very slow. And I really don't need to because uh, a GFI basic actually has some other commands for that. For instance, I can draw a line. Uh, and if I draw a line, I have to actually provide uh, two sets of coordinates. So the first x, y coordinate, for instance, uh, 100, 100. Uh, which will be the starting point of the line and then I can uh, at the end point of the line let's say 500 300 and it will put a line on the screen and um, yeah and, and the lines uh, they, they have a default style uh, I think there are, there are also ways to actually uh, change the style of the line uh, maybe change the thickness I'm not exa exactly sure because I in, in my getting to know GFI Basic again, I didn't look into this and I can't really remember that from my childhood. Uh, I'm guessing there are, but I will not get into them this video. Now, of course, dots and lines are, are easy. Uh, straight lines you can use to make several different graphics. But uh, if I wanted to draw a box, for instance, uh, like a rectangle, um, I could use uh, I could draw four lines where the end point of one line is already the start point of the next line. But that's also quite slow. And lucky for me, uh, GFI Basic actually also provides uh, a box command. Uh, and a box command, uh, let's write a box with the same coordinates as the line. So starting at 100, 100, and the other coordinate will be 500, 300. And as you can see, it drew, uh, drew a box on those coordinates. And it's a trans so it's only an outline box, there's no fill inside it. Uh, but that's something we can um, use later. But you can see, um, um, yeah, these, these, uh, there are very, very simple commands to draw basic shapes. You can even also, if you want to draw a circle, there's a circle command. And the circle command, it wants you to set some coordinates. Let's say uh, I want it to be exactly in the middle of the screen. So I will give the coordinates 320, 200. And the third value you have to give to the circle is actually the radius of the circle. So let's give this one a radius of 100 and it has drawn a circle uh, and as you can see um, this is this is getting to uh, yeah it, it looks like some some nice modern art uh, so you can you can very very easily put some graphics on screen it's not like um, especially like on the Commodore 64 which used the, the really old version of Microsoft basic to avoid uh, paying another license fee because yeah they got a one-off license for the Commodore pets and they kept using the same one just really milking that license but that also meant that basic dialect did not have any commands to put graphics on screen, which made it very, very cumbersome uh, to do something fun with coding. And you can see in GFI basic, it's actually a lot easier. Uh, I will clear the screen and go back um, to my editor uh, because now let's, let's use this knowledge to draw stuff and combine it with the knowledge we gained about random numbers from the previous video. 
Um, as you can see, I, I uh, put some code in already, and it's a really simple program. Basically, I use the input command uh, to ask how many dots I want to draw. And as you can see, I, in this case, I put the question mark myself, and I let the output, uh, I write the output I fill in to a variable, uh, an integer variable called dots percent. Um, I put a clear screen, which uh, in this case I don't really need, but yeah, okay, let's just, uh, just to be sure if I put it in the next code, I really want, uh, uh, because also I, I will clear this text from the screen um, and print this text, uh, it will be right on the top. It says now drawing uh, a dots number of dots and this, this dots percent is of course the number I'm, I've just put in. And then I will do a for next loop, so a finite loop, uh, which we also learned about in the previous video. And I will do it from one until dots, uh, so until the value that's input by the user. Uh, and I will use some random uh, coordinates for the dots and then use the draw command to draw a dot at those coordinates. Now, of course, the coordinates, I don't want it to be right up to the edge of the screen because I want to leave uh, on the, on uh, vertically, I want to leave some room for my text so they don't draw over my text, which means the Y coordinates, uh, I should, it should be at 20 at the minimum. And um, then I add a random number between zero and 360, which means the maximum value will be 380. So on the top and the bottom, there will be 20 pixels of white space. There will never be a dot drawn there. And for the X coordinate, I do something similar, but uh, in that case, the free space on both sides should be 10 dots. So I use 10 plus random 620, which means the maximum value for the X coordinates is 630. So there will be 10 pixels left until I reach 640. And it will draw the dot and it will do the next I and then it, the code is finished. So let's see if it works. It asks me how many dots do I want to draw. So if I say I want to draw 10, I enter and it draws 10 dots and then it says, okay, the program is ended now. Um, so you can, the, 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 the dot drawing routine is actually quite fast. So uh, also like uh, drawing like 3000 doesn't take too much. And you can see they start filling up the screen quite nicely um, and it didn't take too long. Now I could try to sort of use this routine to make the screen black completely, but actually if I used to complete 640 by 400 coordinates, I would need more than 250,000 dots to fill the screen. And uh, that's the minimum because that's assuming it never picks the same random number twice. So let's not do that and wait for that. Uh, but we can do something similar for uh, drawing boxes. So I will now use the merge command to actually, uh, and I did this before, so it's the text is still there, uh, boxes, dot, uh, boxes list, which basically says, okay, it will execute this code until it's ready. It will wait for me to press a key and that will uh, clear the screen again. It will ask me how many boxes I want to draw. I put an extra space, I don't know why. It will ask me how many boxes it should draw. And then after I give this input into this boxes variable, it will clear the screen again it will print now drawing this amount of boxes and I will count in this case J uh, from one to boxes. And of course, in this case, I will need two, uh, two sets of coordinates. So I will have an X one and an I one. Uh, so I use the same variable here that I did on the top. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter because uh, whatever, whatever coordinate number is left from this last step, uh, I will overwrite here anyway. Um, and in this case, I will do the same. So random, uh, something random between 10 and 630. Uh, and you can see in this case, instead of putting 10 plus random, I can also say random plus 10. Um, it, it works the same. It's, I think uh, this one is a bit more logical because you will say it's minimum and then I will add something to get a maximum, but it, it works both ways. It doesn't really matter. Uh, do the same for Y. And of course I do, I do a second set and then I will draw a box with these four coordinates uh, and I'll do it uh, the boxes number of times. And after that, the program will also, also end. Now, interestingly uh, for boxes, the first set of coordinates don't, don't have to be smaller than the, uh, than the second set. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, I can show in direct mode if I clear the screen. Uh, if I do box uh, 300, 300, 100, 100, it, actually, it should actually work. It draws it just it draws it the, the other way around, but it doesn't matter. Um, so you you don't have to worry about uh, the order of coordinate sets. It both it works both ways. Uh, so now we have two sets of codes, and this is actually sort of a precursor to 
the uh, the big end demo uh, I will show in the last video where we put everything we learned back together. Uh, so I run this code. I will, need, I will throw. I will do a thousand dots in this case. So it's drawing them, and it's ready now. It's waiting for me to press a key, and it doesn't really. It doesn't matter which key it is. It will clear the screen. Ask me the number of boxes. Let's just say two hundred because this routine is also actually quite fast. And it's drawing two hundred boxes, and then the program ends. Um, and the nice thing is, I tried this something similar like this on uh, one of the PCs. Uh, on on uh, at my high school and the routine there was just so slow and and it really made me appreciate just how fast this this basic interpreter actually is compared to a Microsoft Quick Basic on a standard PC because you you can really tell the difference it's it's like a fact it, it's like a factor of two or three faster um, maybe even more I don't know I didn't do any measurements this is just from my memory but I could really tell the difference. Um, but anyway, this is the end of this video. Uh, we have an idea now how we can draw uh, basic shapes, how we can actually generate random input and pass input in those uh, drawing commands. And in the next video, we will have a look in actually how to fill in these graphics. So this were just all uh, sort of wireframes and, and empty boxes. Um, so how can we put some, some nice fills into them? That's something for the next video. For now, I will say again, thank you for watching and hope to see you again.